Okay, so let's have a look at this question one in terms of an analysis. So the question is about silver iodide. So what's silver iodide? That's AGI every day of the week, isn't it? So define the term enthalpy of lattice formation. So the definition here for two marks, it's going to require detail. So what things do we need to think about? Um, well, we need to think about the number of moles involved in it. Obviously, it's going to involve energy. Um, we should just know this definition. It's just one of those things that we need to remember because it does crop up and it helps us understand as well, doesn't it? What's going on in reactions when we can call on these definitions. 1.2, we got some enthalpy change data in table one. Okay, so they're not all the same type of enthalpy change because they've just got this vague kind of enthalpy change here. Well, let's figure out what they are first of all. So we got AGI solid going to AG plus AQ and I minus AQ. So for me, that's delta H sol. Um, AG plus gas to AG plus AQ. Well, for me, that's uh, an enthalpy of hydration. So on I minus gas to I minus AQ. Both of those are enthalpy of hydration. Use the data in table one to calculate the enthalpy of lattice formation of silver iodide. Well, do we know uh, an equation that involves delta H solution? Enthalpy of lattice formation or dissociation really, um, and those enthalpies of hydration. Well, hopefully we do, and all we need to do is rearrange that equation to find that value there for the enthalpy of lattice formation of silver iodide. Bear in mind it's formation, okay? Um, 1.3, the a calculation of the enthalpy of lattice formation of silver iodide based on a perfect ionic model gives a smaller numerical value than the value calculated in 1.2 explain this difference. So if it's smaller numerical value, enthalpy of lattice formation, um, well, that's going to be a negative value. So it's probably going to be less negative. Um, but we need to think about why. All right. So if you're au fait, and if you're familiar, I should say, with, um, say, experimental data versus the perfect ionic model data, then it shouldn't be too taxing to get two marks out of this explaining the difference or why those differences occur. All right. Last one, 1. 1.4. Identify a reagent that could be used to indicate the presence of iodide ions. Uh, so we need a reagent uh, and describe the observation made. So iodide ions in solution. How do we test for them? What will we see? Two marks there. Nice and straightforward. We've been using that test for a little while now. Um, so yeah, generally speaking, okay, it's about potassium iodide. No, silver iodide, I should say. Um but mainly it's about enthalpy and lattice uh, changes and enthalpy of lattice formation and so on and so forth. Cheeky little observation and test at the end there, but yeah, shouldn't be too taxing this one.